Christ's great prophet, teacher, and leader. The date of this modern miracle was August 17, 1887. Garvey was a man who, in retrospect, was far ahead of his time. This is clearly proven by the fact that his ideologies have resurfaced today and could be considered a major factor in the liberation of African peoples the world over. He sought to revive the spirit of black people from despair to hope, from lethargy to positive action, from fear to courage, from inertia to assertiveness, from anti-discrimination dodges to manly confrontation. He gave them goals possible to man, the highest creation of God, because he believed with all his heart in the innate abilities of the African race. On August 1st, 1914, Garvey launched the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League in Jamaica, an organization to advocate the unity and blending of all Negroes into one strong, healthy race. After the First World War, there was a resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan influence in the United States. Another decade of racial hatred and open lawlessness had set in, in which Negroes were again prominent among the victims. African people were by this time more than ready for a Moses, and only a black man could express the depth of their feelings. Marcus Garvey settled that question for thousands by forming the U.S. branch of the UNIA and ACL in June 1917. On June 10th, 1940, at the age of 53, Marcus Mosiah Garvey died in London of a severe stroke without having set foot in Africa. But his impact there was tremendous. He left a rich legacy of history for us to study and utilize in our continued quest for independence and liberation as a people. The, the black race is one of the branches of the human race. As a section of humanity, he occupies a position in a world at the present time most unfavorable and most uncomfortable. The black people are subjects of ostracism. It is sad that our humanity has shown us no more love, no greater sympathy than we are experiencing. Wheresoever you go throughout the world, the black man is discarded, is ostracized, is relegated to the lowest in things, social, political, and economical. This therefore suggests a problem and one that must be solved. We in this section of the world are not entirely free from this unkind, unsympathetic, and uncharitable behavior of the groups or races around us. But since man has been placed on his own responsibility, whether he be black, white, or yellow, he must act on his own account. We will not unduly whine or complain, but reason among ourselves and see what can be done to remedy this state of affairs. Life is a conflict. You have to fight your way through it, whether you will it or not. Those of us who are able to fight most stubbornly live, accomplish most, and to them go the laurels, the palms, and triumph of our civilization and world. We unfortunately have not been trained nor educated to the truths of life, paradoxically so. He has shown us no more love, no greater sympathy than we are experiencing. Wheresoever you go throughout the world, the black man is discarded, is ostracized, is relegated to the lowest in things, social, political, and economical. This therefore suggests a problem and one that must be solved. We in this section of the world are not entirely free from this unkind, unsympathetic, and uncharitable behavior of the groups or races around us. But since man has been placed on his own responsibility, whether he be black, white, or yellow, he must act on his own account. We will not unduly whine or complain, but reason among ourselves and see what can be done to remedy this state of affairs. Life is a conflict. You have to fight your way through it, whether you will it or not. Those of us who are able to fight most stubbornly live, accomplish most, and to them go the laurels, the palms, and triumph of our civilization and world. We unfortunately have not been trained nor educated in the truths of life, paradoxically so. May I say something to you to give you a true knowledge of yourself and life, so that the same glory and success attained by other men who understand themselves may be yours. Man in the full knowledge of himself is a superb and supreme creature of creation. When man becomes possessor of the knowledge of himself, he becomes master of his environment, the captain of his own ship, the director of his own destiny, the accomplisher of his own ends. Man should understand himself because man is full of knowledge, and this knowledge is a gift of nature. When Mother Nature created man, she deprived him of nothing. He was given the faculty of understanding all things around him. And this faculty for understanding has not been taken away from him. None of his senses have been taken away from him. So there is no excuse for the black man in lacking the knowledge that man has used to beautify the world and produce all that he needs for his happiness and civilization. Look the world over and whatever you see in it that is pleasing to man, contributing to man's comfort, to his needs and to his satisfaction, it is but the work of man. Man blessed with the knowledge of himself and the understanding of all things around him. If you are able to live with the knowledge of yourself and with the greater knowledge of nature, you must know what is good and what is not. 
You must know what is finite. You must know that which is material, physical, and otherwise is at your disposal to create or otherwise use. If we leave America and go over to the East, to Japan, they will be telling their fellow citizens of Japan of the wonderful accomplishments of the Japanese people, proving that man is moving onward as time moves on. But you, you have hated yourselves as you have done in previous years. You have shown malice, prejudice, and hate to each other. And the result is that while other races have made progress, while India has made progress towards nationalism, while Ireland has made progress towards republicanism, while the whole world has made progress in man's accomplishments, you still stand fighting yourselves, dishonoring yourselves, showing no disposition toward that higher life so that you will be abundantly blessed. So reflect and think that you were created for some purpose other than exhibiting malice toward your neighbor or fellow men of your own race. What a pity it is that we cannot stand united without a written law. There is no written law compelling other races to stand together. They are brought together by the gentle touch of nature. The unwritten law of nature causes them to stand together on all occasions. So wheresoever you find them in the field, that one gentle touch of nature causes them to stand together, if need be, die together. But with a black man, you can preach to him from the pulpits. You lecture from the platforms, from the byways and the hedges. The spirit of cooperation, but he will not cooperate. You talk to him gently, you try talking harshly to him, he still will not cooperate. The result is that he falls prey to those who understand themselves and walk through the world making you their source and slaves. You must acquire an understanding of yourselves. Look around you. See the smiling pictures of nature, the beautiful hedges, the wonderful mountains, the wonderful vegetation all around. But because of your disposition to each other, you live in suffering, in want, in penury, and in debt. You lack the gentle touch of nature, love for each other, you hate yourselves. Black men and black men, and what is wrong with you? Why have you no affection for yourselves? Could I hope to see you living among yourselves as the people I've spoken of? Living in charity, love, and in sympathy with each other? It can be done. I wonder if you will adapt that course. Isn't it easier to enjoy prosperity than to live in ignorance and darkness? Why select the worst out of nature? Nature never gave pain, suffering, and death to the world. It was man himself who selected death, pain, and sorrow. I wonder if I cannot inspire you to select between good and evil. Let me impress upon you once again that whatsoever your hardships may be, whatsoever your difficulties in life, they are your own selection. And so if you encourage them, if you husband them and take them to your bosom, they will abide with you. Nature will not take them away from you as Mother Nature did not give them to you. She is not responsible for your sorrows. Mother Nature represents all that is beautiful. She gave you the highest personality in the realm divine. Your sorrows are your own. If you want joy, if you want sunshine, it is before you abundantly in nature. I made a selection of sunshine, the beautiful sunshine. I made a selection to laugh with the moon, to laugh with the stars, and sing with the birds of the forest and of the wilderness, to join in the rhythmic music of the winds that sing from east to west and from north to south. Had I selected sorrow, I would have been dead a long time ago and been without that which would send me into the presence of the divine because I would have lived not with the knowledge that is divine. We must acquire the higher knowledge of life. Black men and black women, will you get the knowledge that the white man has that causes him to be leaders and masters in the world? They are not gods with a peculiar source for understanding the world around them. They have only given expression to the knowledge of their humanity and been able to use and conquer all to their satisfaction and glory. And that is why they are always greater than you in every community that you find them. Isn't it strange that wheresoever the white man is found, he takes precedence over you? Why is that so? Answer that for yourselves, black men and black women. Wheresoever you come in contact with the white man, you always have to go down in defeat before him. Whether it be in England, in France or in America, you always have to go down to the white man, and yet he has two eyes, two feet, two hands, same passions, same senses and feelings as you have. Your feet are not put on opposite sides, now your hands turned around the other way. But it's because you fail to use your will, your knowledge and your mental faculty to the point where you will enjoy life around you. I'm only here and not in the gutters and in the pond of despair because I use my intelligence. And I swear that no man alive shall ever use his intelligence in understanding the works of nature more than I. I shall rise as high as he ascends. I shall meet him on the same platform of mental equality and fight him till thy kingdom come because nature created us equal. I want you to make up your minds as I made up my mind years ago. Make up your mind that you will rise to the knowledge of your soul. 
because of your ignorance you cannot understand and decide between good and evil you don't know whether you're doing right or wrong with a greater knowledge of life you're able to appreciate all things around you I'm able to gather you here because I understand you understand your neighbor your wife your children and you will be able to live in harmony with each other and get the best of the life the early Africans were able to be the fathers of our civilization because they persevered in their object when we hear the civilization of the Alexandrias of the Timbuktu's the creation of the black man in the early ages do we realize that the civilization we now enjoy was handed down to the present century but the black man went back to sleep and is still sleeping we are trying to awaken you to the true consciousness of yourselves. You young black men, you young black women, may we not appeal to you knowing you as we do. To turn over a new leaf, rejecting the ignorance, the foolishness, the childishness that has been your part for these many years. We have looked into your faces, you growing manhood, the rising generation, and no serious thought can we see registered on your countenance but the thought of vulgarity. I've been in your presence and my heart bleeds for you the conduct you reflect I've listened to your dirty language used to express yourselves when you could have expressed yourselves in good form can I appeal to the black manhood to turn over a new leaf I'm ashamed of my black manhood and what I've said to the black man I also said to the black women your conduct is disgraceful young women whose personality spells respectability at the least provocation the filthy words they utter would almost make